Uh, welcome everybody. It's uh, it's it's different. It's it'll be great to see you all personally, but it's at least we're communicating. So, um, Gui Midag. I hope I said that right. But, uh, uh, I'm going. To, my talk this afternoon is going to be on tomorrow's incubation rather than just automation. So, stepping right in. Uh, the agenda is going to just quickly about evolution of uh, incubation, what's available, in, basically in terms of the manufacturers, automation equipment, and, and uh, manufacturers as well. What are the kind of trends we're seeing going forward, and new concepts and future developments in the hatchery business or automation, and what to consider for the future. So when we look at the evolution of incubation, we come a long way from the 200 to 400 BC when the Chinese and the Egyptians started incubating eggs in larger numbers. Or this Chinese Kang incubator or the Egyptian hatchery, where you can see these kind of ovens or these underground uh, chambers where they used to uh, place the eggs and keep them warm and uh, extract through chimneys you can see here where the eggs are placed on the floor. The light coming through the chimney was where they used to candle the eggs. Uh, and then the baby chicks were just uh, reared inside these warm corridors as well. And when you look back then, there was no automatic turning. All the eggs had to be turned manually at least twice a day. They didn't have any temperature sensors. They placed the eggs close to their eyelid to check the temperature. Obviously, this was a bad example. There is too hot. You know, until we've seen like those smaller scales and we saw some of the large scale drum machines to the fixed rack multi-stage machines to trolley loading multi-stage machines. And today with a lot of single stage machines, which are or what we call all in, all out incubation. So if you look then at the which machines do we buy, the choice of manufacturers, the main ones, really come from this list below. We have Chickmaster, uh, Emka, Mtech, Agitech, Jamesway, Linko, Passreform, and Petersign. And there will be there will be some other smaller names, but these are the main uh, operations commercially around the world. And you can see if they got a range of selling single stage or multi stage machines. So just a little bit about each manufacturer and what they offer and a little bit of their, some of their uh, products they do. And starting with Chickmaster, it was acquired by the International Atri Audience Group, which includes James Way, Peter Sign, Novatech and uh, Maxi, which is an automation company in, in NL, in the, in the Netherlands. You know, and the concern is whether James Way continues with them or try to gain their market. You know, because Chickmaster has lost lost all their established people, their staff, especially in Europe. You know, over the last uh, couple of years, they offer a full range of incubators. They have very good heat recovery systems and these standalone units called CC3 units and ventilation. But we don't see or hear anything innovative since its acquisition. The main advantage over the, the chip master system is air only passes through one tray, you know, so it gets better air movement and more, less variation. And in the single stage machines, they can have these fans which are bi-directional, which can move uh, forwards and backwards to try and uh, keep the temperature stable. EMCA is an operation based in the Netherlands and it was founded by ex Petersheim staff. Its unique feature is this circular cooling pipe design, and they keep higher water temperatures of around about 20 degrees centigrade. They claim a drier hatch and better chick quality. They offer CO2 control and weight loss systems. The concern is, again, is whether they'll be around or have a significant presence in years' time. And the build quality is a little bit questionable. If you're not sure, ask Gregory Art, and he can emphasize on that. MTEC is a relatively new company. It's set up by the former Chickmaster UK team, Ken Baker and Mike Osmond. And if they do 
what we expect them to do, they should take a lot of business away from Chickmaster in the USA. They've learned from their old working at the old Buckeye or the Chickmaster machines what the problems was and should have integrated um, better replacements or adapted the machines better for that. They've had several new projects and uh, new, new installations, which is good news for them starting off. They've patented a, a fan with IDOR that gives a much better air distribution throughout the, the machine from top to bottom trays and gets more uniform eggshell temperatures. And they claim this 0 0.6 degrees difference between their trays. And you know, on some checks we've seen it's been pretty good as well. They've gone away from the communal turning system back to electrical plug-in system for better, for more consistent turning angles. And it's the only company currently which offers the PIR panels or the fire retardant panels as standard in their machines. Other companies can offer it, but it's something you have to ask for, or maybe the cost. Hatch tech, probably most people have heard of. They're the trendsetters. They're one of, if not the most innovative incubation companies. Uh, they're based in the Netherlands as well, and they're focused greatly on research. They're the company that started off really pioneering the eggshell temperatures as opposed to air temperatures, which we commonly use today in hatcheries. They have a different approach to their ventilation system and use this laminar airflow, which goes through the trays rather than sometimes a vertical um, direction. We have independent eating and cooling radiators in each section of the machine. They also developed the hatch brood, which is uh, currently being uh, updated to the hatch care, which is their early feeding systems in the hatchery where they can give chicks have access to feed and water as soon as, they're, as soon as they hatch. The hatch traveler is their truck, which is designed again with the same airflow and can take uh, larger numbers of chicks. They have uh, their own chick storage room. And they develop the cycling, which is replaces pl the plenums in hatchers. So they can, it's a bit like a Dyson Uber where they can contain the chick fluff in that container as opposed to having a big storage area. And the evaporator for the ultrasonic humidification. James Way in the USA is really predominant for their presence in the uh, US and Australia. They offer different size tray capacities, but they have limited technical and backup support in many countries outside of those places. Now they also have introduced the AdSense, which is almost like a, a machine to, to recognize when the chicks start pipping and hatching as a sensor to, to reduce the hatch window or the time the chicks hatch. And they have these kind of pilot uh, temperature probes they can use to monitor their eggshells, their egg temperatures in their machines as well. Linko, based in Denmark, relatively small in the incubator world, but part of a large organization dealing with the fishing industry and other operations. They're formerly known as, uh, as part of the Funky uh, Group or Funky Incubators. And one of the unique things is they have their cooling pipes that are installed in their wall panels to try and ease the cleaning or aid the cleaning operation of the machines. Pass Reform, another uh, Dutch uh, company. It's a subsidiary of Hydrotech Industries and they have a turnover of over a quarter of a billion. But they also acquired Nature Form, which is another manufacturer in the USA, but mostly for game birds. They have a range of their Smart Pro incubators. Again, they have the cooling coils built into the wall panels. Uh, they have a smart center, which is, which does a hatchery monitoring uh, system. You can also use it onto your phones. They introduced a new chick counter and spray back system called Smart Count. And also they have just realized, released the Smart Start, which is the, their version of a post hatch early feeding system with a patent, which they share with HatchTech. Peter Sign, based in Belgium, Ghent, uh, the largest. They sell more than twice as many machines as to any of their competitors. They're a global operator and they've got uh, very good support globally as well. They're probably the first recognized single stage manufacturer. 
and their kind of uh, equipment includes embryo response incubation using the OVO scan, uh, the CO2 control, dynamic weight loss to see how much uh, the eggs lose during the from the start of incubation to 18 days. The sinker hatch is the same as like what you saw for the James Way there for the hatch window, recognizing when the chicks start hatching. Their monitoring system is called Eagle Eye. Um, they've got eco drives, which is for energy reduction in systems and eat recovery systems. I'm currently working on um, early feeding systems as well. The next subject we talk about is automation. And it's really a case here of man versus machines. And what you see, especially in um, Europe and a lot of parts of the world is, is labor becoming more expensive and automation um, being introduced to reduce costs or get the efficiency of costs. In Africa, a lot of the time is it's the companies are more inclined to try to um, want labor or promote more labor in that, but you have to keep watching as you go for your cost efficiencies. You know, the bot, this robot in the bottom here really interests me as uh, I see it as a more cost effective option than the wife if it can do provide food and do uh, washing up and everything. So that could be interesting in the future. Who are the manufacturers? There's a list here, Viscon, very well known, ECAT, taken over by Siva, uh, Innovatech, Cool, American company, Prinzen, Fast Reform, Peter Sign, Maxi, and Sonova, or the old Stalkat uh, operations. So what kind of automation is there available, you know, out there in the market? So if we look, starting from the beginning of the process with eggs, you can get machines to do egg grading, train up or boxing. You can do egg weighing. You know, your trolley weighers, so you can have platform scales, so you can weigh your eggs before you incubate them and weigh them afterwards to get an accurate idea what the weight loss is uh, transfer. And the same for chicks also. Uh, transfer from farm trays to setter trays. So you see this kind of machines here, like these stackers, they can uh, transfer it across. You've got cracked egg detection systems, automatic as well as manual, uh, disinfection systems in there. You can get farm trolley washers, and you can also have automatic turning during storage in your hatchery as well, in your, in your egg store. So I'm hoping, I have a lot of videos, and I'm hoping this is going to work well. This is one showing egg packing. So you see here the trays of eggs are man. This is manual unloading. They're being picked up, dropped onto a conveyor belt, coming into a Prinzen packer. And you'll see the eggs here go for a series of rotations. This pushes the pointed end downwards into the tray before they're loaded up onto the setter trays and automatically stacked in the trolleys to go to the egg room. That's just one. Sorry. The well, next stage in the hatchery is after 17, 18 days and we come to transfer. So we can do the candling and transfer operation, which is candling is identifying the infertile or the, the um, infertiles or early dead germs. And uh, transfer is moving these eggs from the setter tray into a basket, which will contain the chicks. We have Inovo vaccination. So if we want to give vaccines to these in, in the egg, as opposed to doing vaccinations uh, as day old chicks. These stackers and restackers, we can have after the candling operation, automatic backfilling. Uh, so we can fill up trays with fertile eggs so we can get um, less space in the hatches or use less hatches. But we don't recommend that to be 100% backfilling. Vacuum waste disposal of the clear eggs. And we can even lick, separate the liquid from the shell and uh, go into tanks. And this can be, if there's uses of that where it can be sold uh, more beneficial uh, to, to, for cost benefits. We got setter tray washers and setter trolley washers. 
So here's an operation. This is in the UK. Uh, you can see here, this is the transfer operation. Trolley is going to be fed into this D stacker, which is going to take trays out and then place the trays onto a conveyor belt, go through a candy machine transfer. The empty trays will then go through to the washing machine and the transferred eggs will come back through the other side in baskets into a restacker uh, to go to the hatchers. So you see here, it's taking the eggs out, placing them onto the conveyor. The candling unit, it identifies which is the infertiles or an early dead. And it, there it will reject those eggs into the vacuum system straight to a tank. And keep a record of how many they've got. And then the trays will convey forward to this transfer. It's a double transfer, taking two trays at a time over into the baskets. Empty trays will go through to the washing machine. And the transfer trays back here to a restacker. You see them loading the baskets up on the trolley and then out transfer to the hatcher. Theo, can everyone see these? Is it all working okay? When we come to chick takeoff, we can get these stackers you know, in the, of the hatcher baskets. We can get chick separators, the machines which can separate the, the chicks from the eggshells. The vacuum waste disposal systems again and macerators. So this is a pass reform uh, D stacker. You see here, it's just take the basket, the trolleys of chicks are placed into this machine, and the, the trolley and the machine is just automatically placing the baskets onto a conveyor belt. And there's a manual takeoff system on this hatchery to uh, for taking chicks off. But just a nice straightforward uh, loop system, taking baskets each time. This system, more, this is a different one. This is a poor, um, Viscon's very good, but this actually is very poor because you can see there's a corkscrew separator here. So the basket is going to invert through this corkscrew, tipping out the, the eggs and chicks. It sounds crude, but it works very effectively. But what I don't like about this system is you can see here after the washing machine, the clean baskets are going back this way. It's just in the dirt, you know, with all the dust in the room, which is a poor operation. And that's the chick baskets are coming from the D stacker here with the chicks in supplied to this uh, corkscrew. You see all the chicks and the eggshells coming out. And then you have an air knife blower. Air knife blower here, which is sucking up the eggshells. And you'll see on the uh, belt afterwards now, just chicks going through to the grading station before they get uh, count to the counters. Also in chick processing, we can just have conveyor systems, grading stations, uh, sexing, vaccination carousels, automatic chick counters, uh, chick weighing, and some of these chick counters or weighing systems will automatically work out the uniformity, uh, especially the past reform counter, the uniformity of your chicks by flop. Uh, Destacking and restacking of chick boxes, spray cabinets for vaccines, uh, for in parent stock and GP hatches, the Novatech beat trimming equipment, uh, hatcher basket and chick box washers. You can get units that can place uh, paper liners into the baskets automatically. Air knife dryers, you just seen. Uh, dynamic storage systems, I'll show you in a second. And barcoding systems, so you can actually trace throughout the old hatchery uh, where your chicks come from, which set or which hatcher. And, going to the farm as well. So this is just the box paper 
fire. So you see the chick box going through from the D stacker. New stack comes in, lifts it, the, the stack up, drops the bottom box, feeds into this next machine where a roll of paper is passed through. It gets embossed to give it grip. And then the guillotine comes down, cuts a paper, and drops into the box automatically as the boxes get then fed to the chick counters. This is for the GP or parent stock. We have uh, beat trim in Novatech. I'm sorry this video is a little bit in reverse. You can see this is after they've been treated. The belt's going through to the second selection or grading station. So bear with me, it'll come, it'll come now in a second where the Novatech equipment is. So after sexing, the chicks are placed on this carousel, come through on this belt on the carousel, go around. And the operatives then, you'll see now in a second, pick up the chicks. It looks very crude, but it's very effective places their chicks two at a time onto this, uh, into these positions. The clamp comes in, it's snuff, it's not hurting the chick. And then you'll see this light as they pass through, the light comes here, the beak is exposed through a little tiny hole where a laser is exposed to a laser, which will then make a ring around the beak and that will just uh, die off and fall off after about seven to nine days which is much more accurate than what it is for people manually doing it on the farms. And then those chicks drop through to the conveyor we saw below going back to the grading. So pretty common practice we see in a lot of uh, parent stock and GP actors today. Chick counters. You see the chicks coming off after the separator. You'd like to see this gap where you have faster belts. You can see a couple of faster shoots here, which separates the chicks so you can count more accurately. This one's got fingers, so when it counts so many chicks, the finger drops to go into the next box. The box moves along, starts counting again. And these machines can count something like up to 60,000 chicks an hour, probably up to 50, 50 odd thousand very accurately. So in this actually, you've got two, mach two machines here. You can see the other one this side. So they can count up to about 100,000 chicks an hour uh, very easily. And then spray vaccine. After they come out of these units, the counting, the boxes will come along to the spray unit. So you see a nozzle up in here, which is spraying the vaccine. As Andre said earlier, a lot of places it's better if you can have the dye so you can see it on the chicks better as well. But you'll see the spray come on now in a second. You have to watch this also making sure that you don't get nozzles leaking too much and having vaccine wastage. The dynamic storage system, you don't see too much of this, but one or two places, especially one big atrium in Holland. Uh, Whereas the boxes are washed and dried, they come down a chute and then stack them onto these conveyors. And you see these all these different rows that they can store uh, thousands of boxes on this system. And then this machine can start loading. There's one either side, so we can start stacking them. And then this goes along which, whichever lane you want uh, to feed these boxes back into either transfer or to chick processing as they need them during production. So this one is all underground. It costs a lot of money, but it's, uh, you know, it's good, good use of the space. So when you look at the new automation and the benefits, you know, we're able to provide the ability to maintain production rates, the predictability on schedules, and minimize the processing times. It can help reduce costs. You have an eye in initial cost of investment but then you get your year on year savings, especially on labor and waste disposal. If you're using something like this heated system where you can convert your waste into 
a pellet or like into a crumble, which can be used for fertilizer, you get about 40% less waste on that system. Reliability is becoming more and more difficult to find good people. They don't want the dirty work, the unsocial hours or the repetition. The health and safety reduces long monotonous routines, heavy lifting, bending, dusty environments. And performance. Generally, we see reduced damage, smoother movements, better accuracy and repeatability for weighing, counting and candling. But you also have to bear in mind the following. Welfare, you know, how this, this equipment is designed and making sure you stipulate that from the beginning that don't want poor welfare the issues of, of handling of the eggs and the chicks. For your people with safety, making sure you've got correct guards, limit switches and protection there. Making sure it's good and easy to clean to maintain your hygiene standards. You need to make sure it's easy to maintain or you have good people that can maintain it. You need minimal downtime and the ease of servicing. Energy, we got to look and see how much energy you have and the sizing of motors, etc. Noise can also be an issue. And if you're going to put battery automation in, just don't think about now, but also for possible expansions as well. And very important is the support. Have you got support locally, the spare parts? And do you have the people or the caliber of people to maintain the kit? And most importantly, is contingency planning. Automation's great, but once you remove that numbers of people, if something goes wrong, you don't have that labor. So how you get by now, you manage. This next session is just covering like what we're seeing as trends at the moment, what's coming through. So we're seeing that the, the industry is becoming more and more retail driven, the supply chain, food safety, and audit compliance. The number of companies are reducing, not just regionally or by country, but globally. They're becoming larger companies because they're growing by acquisitions, leading to more cost-effective production. But then you see larger farms, larger hatcheries. And we have several hatcheries now producing over 2.5 million chicks a week. And currently the largest is in Russia, which is doing 4.5 million chicks a week. But Ukraine, as a facility, and in the future, that one hatchery will be able to do 6 million chicks a week or a million chicks a day. We are seeing more and more vaccinations carried out in the hatchery. And that will become, you know, that will continue going forward. And more and more pressure for enhanced hygiene and biosecurity standards. There's increased emphasis on bird welfare with antibiotic free production, unnecessary mutilations, early feeding systems and access to feed and water in some countries, male culling in layers, public and how that affects public opinions, which is all driving the retailers for more visibility and for consumers as well. We're going to see more automation. We see actors with 2 million chicks a week operated with less than 20 staff. The more maintenance focus with increased automation. And we're going to see larger incubators, people trying to reduce their egg cost or their chick cost basis. And in parent stock and GPs, we're going to see more use of e-treatment or spiders to, to help with egg age. In incubation, the companies are all looking all the time to develop their software to get faster responses, better accuracies, compatibility upgrades. And some people now looking at also on self calibration, the units for temperatures and humidities uh, going forward with their equipment. There's gonna be more and more pressure for energy efficiency, reduced consumptions on fans, motors, and other uh, parts of equipment. There's some people working on wireless temperature logging systems for remote control. You know, so we can log into machines and see what's happening uh, rather than being just there as an, extra, as an extra tool. And capacity. Most manufacturers are increasing egg size trays or number of trays per trolleys. You know, you see 150 egg tray going to 165, or I'm seeing 32 trays in the trolley going to 36. 
You know, MTEX introduced a new 94 egg tray times two trays is 188 eggs. James is the only company that told me recently that they're looking to reduce because they're concerned with the in increased embryo output. And, uh, you know, I think it's a key thing because we've seen it before years ago. We had uh, floors in the bot in our machines. We take the floors out and increase the number of trays from 15 to 18 which affects our turning angles, produces more heat without having any increased uh, ventilation or cooling capacity. So bigger things may be better, but making sure they perform right is, is number one. Circadian incubation, there's some work done in Germany uh, and looking where they eat eggs or put pressure on eggs to higher temperatures to try and make chicks more robust. But you also have to look to make sure you're getting optimum performance, that you're not losing performance just to try and make a chick uh, more robust as a broiler. And automation. We're going to see more from robotics. They're efficient and they're multi-purpose. They can do several tasks, not just one task. We're going to see differences in new equipment for vaccination and how that can be handled. You know, as a company, vaccine companies are working on this all the time. In ovo feeding is another area which is being covered, you know, which should probably look at doing the same thing as well as early feeding, but, but to do it even earlier, which is to the, for the, uh, in the egg. Automatic sexing or gene determination. And already there's for the layer business, there is a machine available now to select, se select and um, where they, which is operational by, um, using markers to determine which sex is a male or female. Also, our company in Israel, which is looking on temperature, which is still not uh, available yet. And traceability programs, you know, for moving eggs and chicks in the hatchery. Automatic candling. There's currently two main systems. You can see not just these companies, but using heat cameras and light sensors to determine the eggs or heartbeat detection. So you can identify infertiles or very early dead, or if it's a viable egg. And these volumes I see increasing, uh, especially with the move towards on-farm action, which needs the eggs to be, the clear eggs to be removed before transfer to the farm. And I expect to see more earlier detection systems with greater accuracy and data capture coming, coming through in the future as well. And cracked egg detection. You know, there's uh, Viscon are looking now at using the artificial intelligence, so camera detection rather than sensors, which become non-invasive to the egg. So I'm going to look at this, uh, just go into this uh, automatic sex in the select egg. It's a scientific approach of endocrinological uh, hormone-based gender identification. And during this process, the eight to 10 day old incubated egg is removed from the incubator and uh, you have sensors which check the, whether the egg is fertilized. Um, what they do is they create a fine hole in the eggshell using lasers, and then they then just subtract a small amount of uh, allantolic fluid from those fertilized eggs. And they can then use a marker uh, to uh, identify whether this is a female hormone or male hormone to know which, which chick it's going to be. And then the females will be used to put back into the trays and back into the incubators, whereas the male hatching eggs will be removed and then processed so they can be used for high quality feed or fertilizers. So here you can see the system, you've got the eggs taken out, these cameras, so these laser beams will create a small uh, hole in the egg and then we'll take out the samples into this marker, which identifies which gene it is, whether it's a male or a female. And you've got this link, and you can see it on uh, YouTube. And uh, so you see the eggs are placed into, this, into these uh, positions. There's the laser making the cut in the egg.
these are the uh, markers to determine C4, so they take every fourth egg. Or five, sir. And then the eggs place back into the trays to go back to the machines for etching. So more concepts, waste disposal. We're gonna see alternative uses like pelleting or fertilizing to reduce costs. You know, a typical one and a quarter million chicks a week hatchery in UU will spend in excess of over 100,000 euros uh, per annum on just on waste disposal, probably much higher than that now. You know, with hatchery trucks, we've seen some better efficiency. Hatchtech have already designed uh, trailers which are 100% hybrid battery driven trailers with the, the use of fresh air ventilation so they can reduce their energy costs by 50 to 80%. Hygiene, you know, there's work being carried out on monitoring systems to detect TVC mold presence visually by using chemical markers for quicker detection systems. So work on that is going to be uh, developed in the future as well. And we've already got it, but chick holding cabinets, we're seeing several manufacturers moving to make these as well because uh, we have better control. We have some, we have two in our Ls in Lane Hatchery, which we're very pleased with, uh, which able, maintains the temperature of these uh, chicks much better. And we take up a lot more floor space as well in the hatchery. Viscon, this is quite interesting. Viscon are going to look to introduce this off site supervisor. And so using more smart technology by doing things like using smart glasses to from HoloLens to it's a company which is a software package that they can support uh, supervision to their engineers or to the companies is probably going to be part of a package in time where by using these these glasses they can help you to rectify the problems uh, you can produce 3d drawings yeah, on, and save on having to have technical engineer visits where they can be done with your own people much quicker or for installation engineers where they can relate back to their base if there's any issues or faults they want to be resolved. So that's quite, quite good. I see that's going to be, can be used in a lot of applications going forward, not just in hatcheries. And then the big question really is about uh, traditional and early feeding or on-farm hatching. And the different systems we have is Hatch Care, which is the one in the hatchery. We've got the on-farm systems, which is Venco-Matic, the patio system, Nestborn, the Venco-Matic extract, which is taken over from patio, uh, Smart Start from past reforms coming through, and one to born. Hatch Care we've seen before, so I'm gonna skip through this one a little bit, but it's basically, um, where you see that the, the eggs are on the tray above the basket and as the chicks start hatching, they fall down below where these chicks have access to feed on one side and water on the other side. So you see this is a water here, it's a, it doesn't recycle, so it's fresh, clean water each time and they can get feed as well. And so by taking these chicks away from the more of the eggshells, you get a better environment. It should give them a healthier start. I'm gonna move on from this one. And then more for the new concept, which is on the farm, which is removing the eggs at 18 days from the hatchery and placing them onto the farm. And so we have things like one to born system. So you can see how chicks are moved in these boxes placed on the floor and as they hatch out they'll be um, hatch out onto the litter. The house needs to be something like about 36 degrees uh, centigrade so we can get the incubation right. I'm going to skip this one. I want to show you this one which is more the nest born. Nest born one. I see this system as being the one which is going to be more uh, 
that takes off more practical because you'd have no investment on your farms. The only investment needed is going to be for these machines, which you'll probably rent, which sets up because there's none of the expense of putting uh, a lot of a lot of uh, machinery into the sheds or anything. Just as long as you've got good eating capacity. So here's a lorry bringing the, the trolleys of chicks from the farm, from the hatchery, sorry, placed into the shed. Load them into the machines. Empty trolley replaced back into the trolley. There's a temperature monitor which can be linked to the phone or to the computer. Extract just very quickly. You see the eggs. This is where a lot of investment on the machinery to put this cradle in, so the eggs can be moved down the shed, down the broiler house. Sorry, not shed. Checking the temperatures. Low temperature. Now you can see the trays are being moved along so they can take them out, the waste disposal, or count the empty eggs to see what the actuality is. I'll just cut that short, sorry, I'm short of time. So it's, uh, but those systems are, seem to be doing very well, be on the, especially on farm, because you're taking away a lot of that uh, bacteria flora from those chicks when they start hatching. So you see less antibiotic use, better starts, less stress for those chicks, and better uh, body weights as well at the start. So the last section really is what to consider. You know, your incubator size, you don't want to have big machines if you've got small flocks, you end up putting five flocks into a machine, making it more difficult to control the temperature. The compatibility with the existing, bus existing business with a tray and basket type. 
your service, your backup, wherever that supplier is going to be there long term, it's going to be sustainable. And the cost, your first cost is the best cost. I always say that because people will try to say the larger machines because they're going to be cheaper, but they have to work well. And examples in South Africa, I have two examples where people bought 24 trolley machines instead of the 12 trolley, but then they had small flocks of 8,000, 10,000 breeders, and they're never going to work the same because they won't have the same temperature control. So the choice is yours. Wherever you want to build, go back into the history and build another pyramid, or wherever you want to look for some of the new technology. But one thing is important, regardless of the industry being driven by innovation and technology, we still need the stockmanship. I'd like to acknowledge these people for their information and their help in this presentation. And thank you very much.